task I've been asked to do multiple times is to document all of my dashboards and to document my analytics and things like that. And I used to go out and make a nice big Word document that you'd keep updated and you put in all the information. And it was a pain. As soon as you wrote it, it was out of date. And to be fair, not everybody wanted to go pull up that Word document and search for it. And then I thought about it and I, I came to this really cool conclusion. Why don't I have Splunk document its own pages for me? And there's some details that are already in those pages. And let's leverage that and then let's give a, get a little more information on there. And so well, let's, let's show a demo of this. I have, I have this page. This is my little banner. It shows up on every page and every page has an about this page. And if you click it, it's going to use the dollar sign environment variable and push in the name of this page. It's basically going to take this help one metadata fields and pass it on to an about page. And what I've done is I built this little about page. It receives this little field here. And then it will fill out the information as it as it looks it up. And we're going to actually go walk through the tutorial. And so it'll tell me any sources that are being used, any source types that are being called out, any event types. And so if I have queries in a dashboard, it will actually tell me about those queries. It'll tell me it's using uh, this source type or that, or this event type or this source. I, here's my URL. I can tell it's in the Lame Training app, the owner. And then I write here details, tutorial on how to use the metadata command. Uh, using metadata can quickly search source type, sources, and hosts. So I'm kind of giving, I give a nice little uh, example of what this means, a little, uh, a little more than the description up here. I also have the ability, if I want to say these are mapped to a MITRE technique or Maybe you're doing to a NIST control or you're mapping it to something. You can actually put that in there. And then I have a use case. And that's just kind of what kind of a dashboard is this? So I can see my training dashboards, my informational dashboards, my hunting dashboards, my inventory dashboards, and all those can be use cases. So this is really cool. I've got the documentation all here. And I, I'll show you how we make it work. So if we go edit this, I'm going to go grab the content here, chain main search. Control A, Control C, and let's go put this in a search page. We're just going to break this down line by line. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the rest command. This rest command will pull back all of the services, uh, views, etc. And if I go do this, I'm going to get back a view is actually what Splunk uses that uh, calls their dashboards. And so here, if you, you can actually see all the data that Splunk has for it. Um, and you're just using this little rest call, and it's looking for all users, all app, and the data UI, and then the views folder. And it's going to pull back this information. Uh, one of the quickest ways to navigate this, just I like this concept, you can do a head one, and then use the term transpose. Transpose will flip the the data from running left to right to going north to south up and down and so now i can see all right here's some information that we have about this dashboard we can see whether it's disabled what was written as the description um, it's an identity and credential management it's in the compliance essentials database uh, dashboard uh, app i can see a whole bunch of information about it so i'm going to grab some of the information they have and i'm going to add information to it and so that's what's going on there just grabbing this uh view and after you use this rest command then you run a search and you say hey i want to look at the app i want to go grab all the apps but i want to make sure that the author does not equal nobody meaning i want to make sure it's an author it's it's got an author, and that typically means it's been ba made by one of your analysts, one of your users, one of your uh, admins, and so the author will show up. Um, you could change this to only look in specific apps. In my case, I want to see all the apps because I want to document all the apps. Then I have this little lookup, dashboard details.csv, and I'm matching on an ID and ID. So let's go look at what that dashboard details is. This is where the, the magic happens of giving me some extra information. So if I go to my lame edu dashboard details, 
I have not documented all my stuff, but I'm going to give a demo here so you can see it. Here are five dashboards that have been uh, documented, and we can see there's the details. I'm giving more description. Here's where I put a MITRE control. I could change this to be a different thing, but this is what I chose. I want to map to MITRE. I can make use cases, and I can just write that in. I can actually build a dashboard that will allow me to mod put this data in for now we're just going to use a uh, uh, look up just so it keeps it really really simple so you can see how it's being done but in reality you don't want to have to type all these into the csv why not give yourself a nice little gui dashboard that you can put this stuff in but the d one thing to note is this is the name of the field so we're here on help one metadata field notice this says my address nus app lame training but when I go look at my lookup editor, it's actually looking at uh, local host, 889 services, nobody, lame training, data, UI views, help. Thing to recognize, this is the actual physical location, more or less, on your Splunk instance. This part, service NS and nobody, that's that's part of that. If you remember my very first time I said there was this dash in the dash, it says, hey, what user to run and what app. In this case, we're going to run, we're going to give, we're going to do a service meaning, hey, let's do the REST API. So, uh, anybody, which I don't know why they call it nobody, but this is the user, this is the app. And so once you get into the app, if you go into your Etsy apps, you'll see lame training, then you'll see a data folder, a UI folder of views, and then the name of your dashboards. And so you need to put them in this way. And so it isn't as easy as just cutting and pasting this address, but it's really not that big a deal. You're just gonna basically, cut from the nobody just repeat that over and over again and then copy this piece in there and so uh, then you go put your your uh, details in there your miter technique your use case your status etc and you're good to go so that's how that lookup's working and you'll notice the field we're using we call that dashboard we call this piece id so we're we have and that we use id just so it would match what the uh my little REST API calls, this returns ID. So we did ID as ID, we're outputting our details, the MITRE and the use case. Um, we fill the null in case nothing comes back. We, it's always good to handle, uh, anytime you do lookups, it's not a bad idea to make sure there's some value if they don't match. And then we're using this regex field. I'm taking the ID, I'm looking at the ID field, and I'm gonna pull out the URL field, and this little regex is going to go basically to the last slash and pull everything after. And if you re remember how the lookup's written, it's gonna, so it's going to skip all of this stuff, and it's going to just grab that part right there. So it'll grab just this last little section. That's what the regex is doing. Um, then we're going to search the URL field where that equals the ID. And if you remember this about this dashboard, I'm passing this in. So it wants to make sure that, so it's grabbing those ID fields, but just the last section and it's matching what we passed in, which is the last section. That's how that's working. Then we're going to do a little regex here where we're going to go through the EAI data field and we're going to search for source types. And here's a little regex. Um, here's a little regex for doing source, a little regex for doing event types, and it pulls those fields out. So it's going to look through all the EAI, EAI data, which is basically the XML file. And if it sees the word source type with equal and source and event time, it's going to pull those out and put those in into a place. And then we're going to uh, dedupe so that we don't have multiple if it sees that source type multiple times, you don't write it many times. So we're just basically deduping this stuff. And then we're gonna write out, these are the fields I want, sources, source type, event type, data sources, et cetera. I'm gonna rename them so they're user friendly. And then we're back to that little transpose command. Instead of running left to right, I'm gonna run up and down and rename because it'll come back as column in row one. And I don't want that. I want it to be useful names. So I'm gonna use field names and descriptions. And that's all I have to do. And so if I pick a dashboard, let's go pick one that hasn't been done. We'll do one for demo purposes. So I've got one, two, uh, nine, 10, 11. Looks like I need to do three. So we're gonna come in here. I'm gonna grab help Splunk basic syntax. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time writing my details here. I just wanna make it simple. So you get the point. If I come in and I write about this page, we're gonna see that it's gonna run And when it fills out, we're going to have no description. 
no details, but it did see that this thing is using the word is using source types of LimeCon, and it's got these sources being used. So it is stripping those things out. And if we look at the, of course it is because it's got we've got it written in here LimeCon and things like that. Um, there is my LimeCon right there, and so it's pulling it out. It's that's doing exactly like I wanted. Um, we'll definitely want to fix the the dedupe here, so it's not showing up three different times, two times here. Um, but anyway, but what we need now is details. There's no details there, and these are TBD, meaning no one's put anything in there. So how do we fix that? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go go to my lookup editor. I'm going to insert a new row after. And the easiest thing to do is just copy this, paste it, and then I'm going to take everything after lame training, and I'm going to erase it. I'm going to come over to my help here, and I'm going to grab everything to the right, copy it, put it in the lookup editor, and tutorial on the most common SPL commands. Uh, the tutorial will cover syntax, have links to YouTube videos, and links to run example SPL code. Cool. What MITRE technique, let's say it doesn't have a MITRE technique, but we're going to make it up, T1109. We're going to say that's what MITRE technique it maps to. I could, we're going to say, we're going to give it multiple, and we're going to give it T1100, uh, 1100, uh, 1000, and this is for hunting, and the status is, right now I'm not showing status, but the status can tell, you can use the status, say yes, the dashboard's done, yellow for the dashboard's in production, red the dashboard is uh, no longer useful. You could do, that's why I put it in there. Um, it keeps, lets me know what dashboards I'm still working on, what dashboards I wanna get rid of, and I can just document it there, and then I can look later and say, hey, give me all the dashboards that need to be removed or redone or things like that. So I'm gonna save the lookup, and now when I re I'm going to close this, we're going to come in here about this page, and now we have no details. My bad. This is why I told you you can't just copy and paste, so I should have copied the entire thing over and if it's in a different app, I just need to change this little piece here. But I should have copied everything left of this last slash. And if I do that, now it will work. That's why it's important to recognize where the location is in the website is not the same as what you're looking for in the ID. And so we'll refresh this page. And it's so important, copy and paste one slash save lookup well you get to, you get a learning to t learning with me how important it is to make sure you put the right things in there refresh this famous last words all right now we got the tutorial now we got the miter techniques and we could even build a search that says hey give me all the dashboards that are related to a MITRE technique. Give me all the dashboards that use this source type or this source, or give me all the dashboards that are hunting related. You've got, you now have the ability to search your own data for the relevant stuff, which will break onboarding of new individuals much, much easier. I hope this tutorial was useful. I hope it helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And if you like this video, found it useful, give me a big thumbs up. I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. I'm going to continue making videos. Being subscribed will help you see those videos as they come out. Um, if I always will take requests. If you have anything you want me to build videos on, put it down in the comments. Join my Discord channel right there. Send an email, whatever you want. Um, if I can make it happen, I'll put videos out. I've already taken some requests from others, and I will continue doing that. I want to make stuff that is useful to everyone. And so I hope this helps.